Hi, welcome to my video. I'm going to continue with talking about youth, but I thought I'd mention today um, about young boys, young men, and this um, conviction that they've got to carry lives with them. Now, to down the news again, I had a young boy, uh, 16 years old, has been stabbed. Of course, he's dead. He's not going to be able to do a lot about that. Um, two months ago, I visited the hospital, um, King's College Hospital, and um, I spoke to one of the young boys who'd been stabbed twice in the stomach and in the side. And as I spoke to him, his mum was there, and I explained to his mum how surprised I was that he'd been involved in this type of thing. But like a lot of boys, he just left school, had time on his hands, and thought he could just do whatever he wanted. Unfortunately, that led to him getting stabbed. Now, I won't go into the bits and pieces about it, but this is the strange thing that happened. I spoke to him. I said to him, you know, 5 the police base, are going to come and ask you who this lad is. So I'm saying to you, do you know who he is? And by the response I got from him, of course it was yes. But when the police came along, it was a, a detective, well, even detective, just two PCs in plain clothes, basically. They said to him, look, you know, blah, blah, blah. They started the line of questioning, which really surprised me. And, of course, he got aggressive. Now, his mum was trying to put pressure on him to say to him, look, just say it was whoever it was. He couldn't do that. He wasn't able to do that. I don't know why. Mancho, brave. I said to him straight, you know, you know, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. So don't be getting any bright ideas. I said, your mum loves you. I mean, she's got about four sons. And um, it, it just got difficult. And anyway, at the end of the day, he didn't tell me anything. So it's another crime unsolved. Now, I was talking to him and he was um, explaining to me what it was like to, how easy it was when he was in hospital to use a capita. And I said to him, have you gone mad? I said, what if this was a permanent thing? You'd have to use it permanently. He said, right, you're getting off it now, but you've got to heal. You've got to take time. But anyway, he was young. You know what they're like. You give them good advice, they sometimes take it. Now, um, I've sat in a lot of meetings um, to work with serious crime. And I've heard lots of people discuss the killings, literally killings, over the summer period. Now... At one stage, it was one every other week. A young man was dying, was dead. Ain't coming back. We don't know whose fault it is, but the young man's dead, okay? He's not going to school. And I was a little bit surprised and frustrated of the hopelessness of us to do something. Now, the general consensus was that the summer was hot and we all knew the potential for violence in summer is really high longer days, that type of thing. And um, it, it surprised me that there were still boys walking about. And not only were they walking about, they didn't have anything to do. And it dawned on me that we're beginning to treat our children like they're adults, but they're not. They don't work. They're not educated and they're not in employment. We, we have to do something. Now, I was concerned and I voiced my opinion. Um, before the school holiday, what would happen? And, of course, it happened. Um, you know, nobody likes the patterns of violence that are happening, um, but they're happening, and we're starting to understand them. And um, the police are starting to get a grips with some of the crimes. Now, as a society, I'd say we've stopped caring. Why have we stopped caring? You know... Knife crime has become so normal, we no longer notice when a child dies. But the funny thing is, what if your child died? What if he died from knife crime? How would you think? You'd start to think differently. There's lots of boys now think it's a bit of a, um, a nice thing to carry a knife. A shank, if you will, for want of a better word. But, but it isn't. But I know a lot of boys carry knives for protection. I've seen this myself and some of the knives they carry 
aren't really nice. They're, it's difficult. It's not nice. These knives clearly have been smuggled into the country and I put the blame Eastern Europe. That's where it's coming in and that's how they're using them. And we're not thinking. I mean, let's go back to where a lot of them learn about it. They learn about these things when they're 10 or 11. Now, you know, you put on the PS4, you slug into a game. Um, the one with the, the, the crime game where, you know, everyone's a gangster. You know what I mean? If you get your, you get your rewards, which can be money or even a woman. Um, and it starts you thinking in a certain way. Now, this game was designed for American soldiers to be able to kill without feeding. That's why they stab lots of times. They don't understand it. The, you know, fear takes over. And we've got to stop boys carrying knives full stop for protection. Look, most knives that are carried for protection are used on the victim. You know, I mean, in August we had um, uh, Andre, Scott Walker, um, Andrew, another African boy. And um, in fact, what I have noticed is that every other crime is an African boy. And, um, you know, we, we don't focus on it, but we've got to start to do something about it. This is hitting us on our doorstep. Now, some people believe that knife crime is just belongs to London, Birmingham. That's all they believe. Um, and they believe that, you know, oh, you know who's doing it, it's the blacks. Now, let me tell you something about these black boys. You're wrong. It's not them. Statistics bears out that the first place, the first hotspot for knife crime is Cleveland. Can you believe it? And the third place is a place I used to be posted in, Durham. Now, Durham is a, a boring place, so they have to find something to do. But that's another, another problem. We've got to sort it out. We've got to sort it out. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we've got to go on that road. Now, there's no longer an easy answer to place a blame on one particular lot of people or agency. Even the police have put a lot of resources in it. The Mayor of London, uh, Sadiq Khan, has put money into it. Although, I dare say, some of the um, people that are partaking and training haven't got a clue. It doesn't take very long for a boy to work that out. A boy will sit back and he'll think, why is this guy talking to me? And he doesn't know. He doesn't know a thing. He doesn't know what he knows what he's saying, but he doesn't know what he's talking about. Now, I don't know about you, but I mean, if you've ever been there when someone has bled out, it's quite amazing. You know, one wound, um, one wound that is not even about that small, all right, in his stomach. And, um, he bleeds a lot. He bleeds out. And what that means bleeds out within the space of a couple of minutes. You're dead. Look at Damien Taylor. <laughs> you know, stab, pretty stabbed him in the leg and thought, you know what, that's all over. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't, he was dead. It's so easy to kill someone. And, you know, you live a lifetime thinking about it. So I'm beginning to wonder what sort of interventions that we're having not only as people, but in school. We've got to have interventions. We seem to talk about things that don't really bother us. Why we do that, I don't know. Why do we do it? Why don't we dedicate a little bit of time to talk to them about the different types of crime? Why don't we have knife arches? I mean, there are plenty of boys at school, every day, walking around with weapons. They look at to protect themselves. We know differently. We need to do something. Now, I'm not going to keep this long because I'm, I'm timing it. It's got 9.21. Um, and I'm going to um, do another um, discussion about knife crime and um, violent behaviour. So I, I believe that at some stage we have to find the best practice for parents to be able to get to their kids and tell them about knife crime. There must be some time to sit down. You know, you start to talk to your boys, they start to get umpy and like they don't want to talk. Well, you know, that does happen, but there are other ways we can do it. Don't forget with them, oh, you know, when you're 16, you can do what you want. You can't do what you want when you're 16. 
And when you're 18, if you do what you want, you'll end up in prison for a very long time. And the prisons are not a pleasant place. Not at all. Now, I could go to statistics, but I won't. I'd like you to bear this in mind. I, I would like you to focus on young men and carrying lives. There's got to be a way we stop them from doing it. As I said before, um, serious, serious youth violence is on our streets. And it's just an everyday thing. Who cares? We care. We need to stop it. We need to do something, and we can. And sometimes I think the way to stop things happening is that for us to get focused on a intervention, even a punishment, to teach our kids what's right from what's wrong. Anyway, if you've got anything to say, I dare say you have, drop me an email and um, we'll talk about it. This is most probably going to be one of uh, four videos to do with knife crime. And oh, before I forget it, don't forget, you girls, you think it's a bit cool to carry a knife for a boy. I've seen you do it in schools. It's not good. You need to start to use your noddle. I know it's difficult, you know, after you get past the mascara and the hairspray, start to use your noddle. Because you know what, when you're around something like this, you never forget it. Anyway, I'll leave you to that. Thank you very much.